Hello, and welcome little scientists to this week's episode of Stay at Home Science, brought to you by South Brunswick Public Library. I'm Allie, and for this week's experiment, we'll be trying out a classic STEM activity by building and testing out two different kinds of catapults. And for those of you who are wondering what STEM stands for, the S stands for science, the T stands for technology, the E stands for engineering, and the M stands for math. Making catapults actually uses three out of four of those principles. Finding out the forces and physics behind how a catapult works is the science, the building of the catapult itself is the engineering, and when you measure the distance of how far and how high your catapult can launch things, that's the math. Before we can start engineering, we'll have to gather our supplies. And since these catapults are so simple to make, I'll be showing you two different kinds of styles. For the first catapult, we will be needing eight wooden craft sticks. You can also use popsicle sticks, a handful of rubber bands, a bottle cap, some glue, and something to launch out of our catapults. I would recommend any small, soft, lightweight object like cotton balls, little bells, marshmallows, or even just some balled up paper. No hard object should be put in the catapult because we don't want to harm anyone or damage anything. And as always, don't forget to grab a grown up. Let's start building our first catapult. The first thing you want to do is grab six out of the eight wooden craft sticks and stack them on top of each other evenly and then grab a rubber band and rubber band tightly the stack of popsicle sticks with one rubber band on each end. You can double up your rubber bands just to make sure that you're getting a secure hold on them or you can use thicker rubber bands. So you want it to come out just like this. So I'm using a stack of six, but you can experiment with the engineering part of this and see if you could use eight, 10, four. Experiment and see what exactly you're gonna be needing for your catapult. Once you have your stack all secure with your rubber bands on each side, you're gonna take your next two and you're gonna put your first popsicle stick through, make it tricky, and you can always ask a grown-up for help. We're going to put it through that first opening. So it's going to have five craft sticks on one side and one craft stick on the other. And that'll be on the bottom. And you can kind of slide it through kind of like this. And then we're going to grab our next craft stick. And we're going to place it on top. Making almost like a V shape. And then you're going to attach these two together with a rubber band. Again, you can double up your rubber bands or just use a thicker rubber band. Great. So you should have something that looks and resembles this. Now, if you want your catapult to have extra security, you can actually put a rubber band towards the middle here. So crisscrossing it, kind of like that. So you'll have a little X. And this will just help you have your catapult be extra stable, but it's not a necessary step. And if it confuses you, you can always skip it. You can play around with where exactly you put your bunch of sticks. And this is actually gonna affect how your catapult works. So play around with the distance of the stack of sticks and see how exactly it affects your catapult. I'm just gonna leave mine sort of close to the bottom. The last step you're gonna do, take your bottle cap, and you're just gonna glue it right to the top with the flat end onto the popsicle sticks. You wanna glue your bottle cap to the utmost top part of your popsicle sticks, just like so. And then we want our glue to completely dry before we use our catapult. So while we're waiting for our glue to dry on our first catapult, let's start making our second catapult. Before we start making our second catapult, we'll first have to gather our supplies. We will be needing seven wooden skewers and because wooden skewers usually have a pointier end, make sure you're being extra careful when using this. Or you can always ask the grown-up to cut off that end. We'll also need a rubber band, four marshmallows, preferably large or even better if you had those jumbo-sized marshmallows, a plastic spoon, and it does have to be plastic, it cannot be metal. We'll also be needing some tape. You can use any kind of tape, I'm just using duct tape. And of course, something to launch out of our catapult. And remember, it should not be any hard objects. It should be soft, small, lightweight objects. 
And as always, don't forget to grab a grown up. To start off with, we're first going to take three out of four of our marshmallows and place them in a triangle. Then we're gonna take three of our wooden skewers and we're gonna simply just insert them into the marshmallows, making sure you're being careful with the pointy end. There we go. So you can have a triangle that resembles this. Next, we're gonna take the next three and we're gonna put them right into the middle of our marshmallows. So each marshmallow will get one more additional stick. Just right in the middle. And of course you already have two wooden spheres in them, so you might have to adjust the position. So at this step, it should look someone like this. Next, we're gonna take all three and we're gonna have them meet in the middle or as much in the middle as they can. And we're gonna take our last marshmallow and insert all three skewers right into that last marshmallow. So it should look somewhat like a three-dimensional triangle. Next, grab our spoon and you're actually going to tape a spoon onto your last wooden skewer. Once you have your spoon securely taped onto your wooden skewer, you're gonna place this wooden skewer into one of the marshmallows that already contains one of these. So really you can pick any three. I would pick your strongest marshmallow. Once you have it securely put into your marshmallow, you're going to grab a rubber band and you're gonna place it over your spoon. So you're gonna place it over the spoon and over your marshmallow. The rubber band should sit underneath the marshmallow over these three and at the neck of the spoon, just like that. And now we have our two catapults. As you can see, they're two very different kind of catapults, but they essentially do the same thing. And we'll see which one works the best. Now to test out our catapults, I would recommend grabbing some kind of tape measure to see how far of a distance your objects are gonna fly. You can also grab some chalk or maybe some tape to mark a line for exactly where your objects land and see if you, if you can repeat that process and get your objects to land in the same place every time. I'm gonna take the first catapult we made. How you're gonna launch is you're gonna push down the stick and then let go, just like that. And next we're gonna try this catapult. Where you have your skewer that's attached to your spoon, you're gonna hold that marshmallow down, you're gonna place your object in the spoon, and then you're gonna bend it backwards and then you're gonna let go, so let's see. That one flew really high. So we can already see that there's a difference in height that we get with each one. The catapult is built higher and it has a lot more elasticity because the rubber band is able to go further. Our first catapult can only go back so much because of the distance we made with our craft sticks. Do you think you could affect the launching of your items depending on how many craft sticks you built up? Probably. That's something you little scientists can test out when you make these. One thing you want to keep in mind while you're playing with your catapults is to make sure to do it in a space where you have lots of room. Because sometimes you'd be surprised how far your items could launch. Let's learn some of the S in our STEM activity. When your catapult is at rest, so that's when it's just sitting just like this before you push down your cap or even push down your spoon, your catapults have no stored potential energy. Potential energy is stored energy in an object before it's set into motion. When you bend your sticks, you're changing the catapult from a state of rest and charging it with potential energy. How much potential energy depends on how much force you exert on your catapult. When you push your sticks farther down, you're exerting more force. So bending it farther means more potential energy can get stored in the stick. When you release the catapult, that stored potential energy changes or converts into kinetic energy or you might think of it as energy and motion. The more potential energy you store, the more you're able to build up that kinetic energy, meaning your objects will fly farther and faster. This experiment can also show you an example of Newton's three laws of motion. An aspect of the first law of motion, which involves properties of inertia, states that an object at rest will stay at rest unless a force is put upon it. 
The second law explains that acceleration increases with force. It also explains that acceleration decreases with mass. So if you think about it, if you put something really heavy in here, not only will you risk hurting someone or damaging something, it also would be really hard to get that object to fly out of our catapult. You would need a lot of force to do so, just like real life catapults. And the third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the action would be pulling back our catapult and it has an equal and opposite reaction, which is launching our catapult. Alright little scientists, thanks so much for joining me on this episode of Stay at Home Science. I hope you enjoyed learning how to build and test out different kinds of catapults. And if you do this at home, please send us a picture or a video. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our South Brunswick Public Library's Facebook page for more updates and content. Until next time, bye!